Okay, so welcome to the channel, and this playlist is devoted to game theory course. And the first topic is about introduction to game theory. So basically we are gonna discuss what game theory is and what are the basic assumptions you know to be met. Okay, so the first thing is the difference between you know, rational decision making when it comes to economic decisions and when it comes to strategic games. So the similarity between them is that in both cases we assume perfectly rational agents. You know, like agents with perfect computational and analytical abilities who know all the possible states of the world and probability of their occurrence and agents who deliberately pursue their self-interest. However, the difference is that in the process of decision-making um, any party except of the decision-maker is not involved. In contrast, in strategic games any decision made by any player affects both her own payoffs as well as payoffs of other players. And what is even more important is that agents are mutually aware of this effect and it's also a key component of every game. So by keeping this in mind, rational players can predict the moves of other rational players. So on this slide you can see some simplistic schematic depiction of decision-making process and strategic game. So in the first case here, the rational agent would just identify possible outcomes X and Y. Um, I don't know, define which one would be optimal in terms of utility maximization for him, for her, and choose A or B accordingly. That's it. You know, no other parties are involved in this process. In the latter case, the payoffs of player one depend not only on her decisions, but also on the decisions made by player two. So, for instance, if player one chooses A, then depending on whether player two chooses C or D, the payoff for the player one is either X or Y. So, the formal assumptions are as follows. First, as I mentioned before, every agent participating in the game is assumed to be perfectly rational. This means that each agent has perfect analytical abilities, perfect computational abilities, knows all the possible states of the world, so there is no radical uncertainty, like using Keynesian terminology, and each agent pursues her own best interest. So basically it implies that uh, the key objective of every player is to maximize her own payoff. What is more, each agent is aware about rationality of other players. Second, there is a bilateral relationship between the agents. As I mentioned before, uh, it's not only about your decisions, it's all about combinations of your decisions and decisions made by other players. Moreover, each agent is aware about this bilateral relationship or strategic interdependence. Third, all the agents are available, sorry, are aware about the strategies available for them and other agents. And finally, all the agents know the structure of the game. So they know what are payoffs associated with each possible combinations of strategies for themselves as well as for other players participating in this game. Uh, informally, all the agents are aware about the structure of this game. So... Solving the game um, from very general perspective implies three steps. 
First of all, you have to describe the game systematically. This means that you describe players, um, their possible moves, strategies available for them, as well as corresponding outcomes, which means payoffs. Second, you have to formulate hypotheses about players' behavior. So here, again, this rationality assumption comes to game. So basically, rationality is needed in order to make the players predictable, which means making the game solvable. I will give you an example. Like, imagine that you are playing chess with, I don't know, like semi-professional chess player. So you know that her objective is to win. Um, and keeping this in mind, you can interpret, analyze, and possibly predict her moves. However, if you play chess with a child, you know, there is completely no reason to assume the child would like to win, that he or she makes rational moves, and so on and so forth. So in this case, child is completely unpredictable, you know. There might be some random moves, I know, just, just for the sake of fun. So basically, rationality indeed means predictability, and this is what makes this game solvable. I mean, any game solvable. And finally, you have to apply the solution concept. So, in game theory, Nash Equilibrium is one of the key concepts, and it describes an outcome which occurs when all the agents play their best strategies while being aware that the rest of players do the same. We will get back to this when we proceed to simultaneous moves games. So, when it comes to classification, uh, there is the entire variety of ways in which you can classify the games. So first, we can distinguish between games with sequential and simultaneous moves. So sequential moves game basically implies that all the players are aware about decisions made by other players during the previous rounds of this game. Um, I think it's easier to explain based on example, so we will get back to this. And under simultaneous moves games, agents make decisions independently. So basically, they are not aware about decisions made by other players. So when it comes to symmetric games, in symmetric games, the structure of payoffs is basically symmetric for all the players. It means that it depends only on the combinations of strategies pursued by the players and not on any specific personal characteristics of the players. In contrast, in asymmetric games, it's about combinations of strategies and also it's about some personal characteristics of the players. You will get, you will get this in a second. So under zero-sum or constant-sum games, um, Basically, the former is just some subtype of the latter. Uh, the sum of payoffs associated with each combination of strategies is constant or equal to zero if we are discussing zero-sum games. And this condition is not met under non-constant sum games or non-zero-sum games. Under one-time games... Basically, the game is played one time. However, it's also an option to have iterated games when players have to play the same game several times. Uh, we distinguish between perfect information and imperfect information games. So basically, perfect information means the lack of external uncertainty and the lack of strategic uncertainty. Where external uncertainty means that uh, not all the players have the complete knowledge about the state of the world, and strategic uncertainty means that not all the players have certainty about past or current moves of the opponents. So, for instance, simultaneous moves games uh, by default are characterized by strategic uncertainty. 
for both the players because they have no idea about strategies pursued by other players. We distinguish between games with fixed rules and rules which are subject to manipulation or transformation. Uh, this is more relevant to strategic moves and we will get back to this topic probably in six lectures, I believe, whatever. And we distinguish between games with a different degree of agreements and forcibility. So basically it means whether cooperation, like sustained cooperation is possible or the agents will always have some temptations and opportunity to betray. Uh, this is relevant to the prisoner's dilemma and again we will get back to this when we discuss this issue in detail. Okay, so before we proceed I would like to explain the structure of this table a bit. So this is called payoff matrix or normal... No, how to say it? Normal form of the game. So here you have strategies which are available for the first player and strategies available for the second player. In each matrix, like basically, you know, on the intercept of the strategies, you have corresponding payoffs. So here always you have first the payoff for the first player, second payoff for the second player. So the rule of this game is as follows. Two players have to toss a coin, a penny. So if there are two matching pennies, like hat hat or tail tail, then the first player is a winner, like she gets those two pennies, and the second player is a loser, like he loses two pennies. Alternatively, if there is hat tail or tail hat, so there are no matching pennies, then the first player is loser who loses two and the second player is winner who gets two. So as you can see, in each cell the sum of payoffs is constant, so this is constant sum game, and it's also equal to zero. So more specifically, it's also zero sum game. Talking about symmetric versus asymmetric payoffs games. So, as I mentioned before, under symmetric games, it's the payoffs depend only on the combination of strategies pursued by each player, you know. And under asymmetric payoffs, it's also about some traits of the player. So, I believe that, you know, chicken game games depicted below would be a good example. So, the idea of chicken game is as follows. Two teenagers are to figure out who is a chicken heart and who is a brave one. So, they both drive their cars towards each other. If they go straight, probably there will be a collusion. So, each of them will get some injuries, go to hospital, and both of them have negative payoff of negative two. Okay. Negative payoff, specifically negative two. However, if the first player decides to swerve and the second player decides to go straight, then both of them are alive, but they have different payoffs. So the one who swerve is a chicken. He gets minus one. And the one to go straight is a brave one. So he gets plus one, like positive one positive payoff of one. Symmetrically, if the first player goes straight, he gets one, and the second player who decides to swerve gets minus one. So here we assume that being a chicken is associated with some negative payoff, some disutility. However, it's not as bad as having a car incident and going to hospital. And finally, if both of them are not brave enough to go straight and they decide to swerve, then each of them just gets zero. So again, this is a symmetric game. You know, payoffs depend only on the combination of strategies and that's it. However, 
imagine that the first player decided to invite his girlfriend to watch this game. So, if he decides to swerve, he would get minus 3, you know, instead of minus 1. And minus 1, which the second player would get in the same situation. So, we can explain this by the fact that he, he will lose, and he will also lose some loyalty from his girlfriend. That's why, you know, he's... Yeah, okay. That's why going swerve for him would be more painful than for the second player. Again, if he decides to go straight and the second player decides to swerve, he will get 3 instead of 1, which the second player would get in the same situation. Because, again, he would be a winner and he also gains some loyalty, respect, whatever, from his girlfriend. So, yeah. You know, just by definition, it's about combination of strategies, but also it's about some personal traits of players. That's why the second game is asymmetric. So, the strategy is another key concept in game theory, and very informally you can define it as a complete plan of actions. So, in simultaneous games, strategy is an action taken on a single occasion. In sequential games, it's more complicated because it has to describe the entire path of the game, like all the possible paths of the game for individual players. Okay, consider these two examples. First, you have simultaneous moves games. So strategies available for the first player are up and down. Strategies available for the second player are right and left. End of the story. That's it. You know? So strategic action is a strategy, like complete strategy at the same time. Because each of them is to make this decision only once. Consider this game. So this is a sequential moves game and you read it as follows. So first, player one is to choose between up and down. If player 1 chooses down, then player 2 is to choose between left and right. If player 2 chooses left, then player 1 gets A and player 2 gets A. If the second player chooses right, then first player gets B and the second player gets B as well. If the first player chooses up, then the second player has to choose between left and right. If the second player chooses right, first player will get C and the second player will get D. If the second player chooses left, then the first player is to choose between up and down. If the first player chooses up, the payoffs are A, B. If the first player chooses down, the payoffs are B, C. So, how to describe the complete plan of actions for the first player? First, it might be up, up. Like, go up on this note, go up on this note. Like, you read it as go up whatever happens, you know, whatever player two chooses, or always go up. Um, okay, so the second strategy is down, down. So you can read it as go down regardless what happens or always go down. So you can find it a bit illogical because technically speaking, if the first player decides to go down in this round, you know that this branch is just cut off. It's impossible to go down here. However, please take it as given. This is just the way in which you write down the strategy. Even if technically it's impossible to go down after going down, you still write it down in this way. So it can also be go up, down, like go up in the first note, go down on the second note, or go down, up. Again, technically speaking, it's impossible to go up after going down, but 
at this point just second is given i promise it will start to make more sense when we proceed to the optimal strategies so there are two nodes for the first player to make a decision and each node is associated with two possible options so there are four strategies in total let's proceed to the second player so it can be left left which means go left regardless of what the first player does or always go left right right always go right left right which reads as go left if the first player goes up go right if the first player goes down and finally right left so just the opposite go right if the first player goes up go left if the first player goes down so four strategies in total again um i believe it's clear you know when it comes to the second player again for the first player you know you still write it down as down up or down down you know even though it's impossible to go down after you decided to go down in the first round okay so let's have a bit of practice um if you would like to practice so in this exercise you have to list all the strategies which we which are available for the first and the second player so if you would like to practice it's a good moment to put this video on hold and do it yourself and i'm just proceeding so again for the first player available strategies are a c e again even if it's impossible to go e after you go a in the first round you still write it down in this way so a c e a d e a d yeah a c f a d f then we go to this branch so this is b c e b d e uh, b c f and b d f for the second player it's x x go x regardless what happens x z choose z if the first player chooses a sorry choose x if the first player chooses a choose z if the first player chooses b y z y x the complete list is here so a bit of terminology uh, when it comes to sequential games a uh, common practice is to depict these games using extensive form of the game or game tree so this is a common practice because then it's easier to solve using rollback equilibrium or backward induction but it's not requirement as you're gonna see in a second so each time uh, any player has to make a decision we have a node so the first node which initiate the entire game is called root of the game or initial node each node initiates at least two branches like here you have branches a and b then it will be d and c you know whatever uh, each game is finalized let's say okay whatever ends up with nodes terminal nodes and basically they just depict the payoffs so for instance if player a1 chooses a and player 2 chooses c then corresponding payoffs are 1 for the first player and 2 for the second player so as i mentioned before it's a common practice to depict sequential games in extensive form and simultaneous games in normal form but for each type of the game you can do both game representations like for instance let's consider this example so you have some kind of real life problem so there are two firms operating on the market they are competitors and they have to decide simultaneously whether to make additional investment in advertisement or not the cost of advertisement is 10 billion so if one firm decides to advertise 
and the second firm decides not to advertise, then advertising firm will get 20 billion or uh, 20 billion of additional revenue and the second firm will not get anything. If both of them decide to advertise, then neither of the firm will get any additional revenue because let's say this advertisement will just neutralize itself, kind of. So let's depict this game using normal form. So if both of them advertise, they get no additional revenue, but they lose their initial investment. So minus 10 billion, minus 10 billion. If the first firm decides to advertise, and the second one decides not to advertise, then the first firm will get 10 billion, like 20 billion of revenue, minus 10 billion advertisement cost, and the second firm will not get anything. Symmetrically here. Not advertising firm does not get anything, and advertising firm gets 10 billion. And if neither of them decides to advertise, they just you know, get nothing and lose nothing, so the payoff is zero, zero. You can do the same with game tree. So the first firm decides whether to advertise or not to advertise, and then the second firm makes the same decision. So the key requirement here is to denote somehow this imperfect information arising from strategic uncertainty. So basically it means that when the second firm makes a decision about advertisement investment, it has no clue whether the first firm decided to advertise or not to advertise. And this situation is basically symmetrical. The first firm also has no idea about the decision of the second firm. So this dashed line just depicts you know, imperfect information constraint. So the fact that two firms have no idea about the decisions made by their competitors. Okay, so here is the next task for you. You have to present rock, paper, scissors game in the normal and extensive form. So basically in the form of payoff matrix and game tree respectively. So you have to assume that winner will get one and loser will not get anything. Again, if you'd like to practice, it's a good moment to put this video on hold and I am just proceeding with the solution. Ta-da! Okay, so as you remember, rock beats scissors, paper beats rock and scissors beat paper. So here is the payoff matrix. And here the same game in the extensive form. Again, do not forget about imperfect information constraint. Um, in simple words, do not forget to depict the fact that two players have no idea about decisions to be made by the other player. Otherwise, you know, it's clearly that it's clear that the second player has a second mover advantage, you know. Like, if the first player chooses rock, I just choose paper, paper, scissors, scissors, rock. It makes no sense. So, simultaneous moves game can be depicted both in normal and extensive form. The same applies to sequential moves game. So, the algorithm is like this. First, you have to write down all the strategies available for the first player. So, as you remember, first player is always a row player, and for the second player, who is always a column player. So, you write this down, and then you just try to find out the common path for these two strategies. For instance, the first player decides to play A, G, I. The second player decides to play E, C. Again, A, G, I, E, C. So if you draw the path, you know, like, I don't know, like coloring those segments, I mean, notes or doing anything like this, I mean, branches, sorry, then you will see that the common intercept is actually E, A, C. 
and this corresponds to the payoff 1, 2. So then you just put it to the table. Let's do another one. B, H, J, F, D. Again, B, H, J, F, D. So the common path for these strategies is B, F, J, and this corresponds to the payoff 4, 4. So here you have it in this table. So this is another exercise for you. You already, you know, had to list all the strategies possible for player one and player two. And now your task is to do the same as we did a second ago. So you have to transform this game from the extensive to the normal form. Again, if you want to practice, put this video on hold and I'm showing you the solution. So, if player 1 chooses A, C, E and player 2 chooses X, Z, then the common path is X, uh, sorry, A, X, C, which gives you 1, 3. And here you have it in this table. And you know the rest of those possible combinations as well. Okay, so that was it for the first topic. Next time we're gonna discuss sequential moves games. So thank you for your attention.